My brother. Yes. Do you know that you're an inspiration? I'm not so sure. You're not so sure? Yeah. No one is telling you? No one. Do you know that like, when I posted that I want to meet entrepreneurs from Malawi, everyone was telling me, the first person that you need to meet is you. Do you have an idea that people celebrate you in this country? No, I don't. You know, let me tell you something. Entrepreneurs like him are so humble. That's why they have me. They are number one bragger in the whole of Africa. I am not humble. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not humble. I go around and brag about Africans doing something great to change the narrative of Africa. My name is Kremint Taonan. I'm the founder of Ntawi Farms. I'm a Marawian and I'm doing my business right here in Marawi. So I was trained as a nurse and I graduated in 2019. So from 2019 to 2020, I was just moving up and down looking for a job. So out of frustration, I decided to go into uh, agriculture. So what I'm doing now here is agriculture and agriculture is my full-time job. So I got this inspiration from the frustration I had because my thinking when I was at college, I was like, okay, I'm going to get a job as a nurse but it didn't come out, then the only option for me to survive was to go into farming. And for me to do farming, in 2020, I had to sell my phone at 70 US dollars. And next, and you're wearing a gear like this? I'm um, a sell man-made farmer. I, 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 I want to know how it all started because when you see a nest in Ghana, you need to wear green or white. But this is a, this is a gear. Of course. A farmer. Of course. A nest that became a farmer. Yeah. How? Okay. I decided to go into farming out of frustration. See, after I graduated in 2019 from a nursing school, I had to move up and down looking for a job but I was not lucky, I was not hired. So the only option for me was to go into farming. <laughs> you graduated as a nurse? Of course. You started looking for a job? Of course. You're not getting a job? Of course. And out of all the things that can be done, you decided to go to farming? Of course, yes. Do you know that in Africa, we believe that farming is for poor people? You spend so much money in school and decided to become a poor man, how? Is everything okay with you? Let me check. Very okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very okay. Yes. So you know what? Hmm. Um, to me, yeah, I had a feeling like you know we have land here in Africa, fertile land. We have water. Then something just came into my mind to say, you know, my mom used to do this. Hmm. We survived through farming. Hmm. So now I think I can also survive through farming and I put down all the papers from nursing school and I pursue a new course, a new career. That's farming. So from 2020 to that, I've been doing farming 100%. I've never decided to say, no, I think I can drop this and I go start looking for a job. I'm proud and I'm contented. I'm proud to be a farmer now. No, do you mean it's more worth it being a farmer? Of course, I'm proud that I'm eating what I'm producing. That's it. <laughs> Listen, so 2020, yes. we're in 2023. Exactly. Where did it start? I mean, how, how did you manage? Because you didn't have a job. How were you able to fund the whole farming? Because, I mean, we believe that farming costs a lot of money. No, it's, oh. it's, it's a pharmacy. So in 2020, April, I decided to go into farming. So the first step was to look for a land. So I discussed with a friend and that friend said, okay, I'll help you find a land where you can rent it. So we managed to get an acre mm. of land. Then next move was 
how do I get capital? So the only way for me to get capital was to sell my phone. So I sold my phone at 70,000 kwacha, which is around 70 uh, US dollars. So I took 70 US dollars and invested in farming. So I moved from town to this village and I managed to get a house. I was able to pay 3,000 kwacha, roughly, which is maybe 20 US dollars per month. So I took 70,000, I divided it into two, one for my rentals, for, for the house, and secondary for the lentils for the, for the farm, okay? So from there now, now story comes in. As I was working, I had no option where to get money. I had no phone to sell again and regener uh, generate little something for my survival. So they kicked me from the house because now I was failing to pay lentils after three months. So I moved from here, where there was a house here, to, to the garden. And I decided to put up a temporary house in the garden and continued with the, with the initiative. You first moved to, from town? Yeah, from town. To this village? To this village. What was the first place that you stayed? So it's here. And, and, and for historical purposes, I decided to put up a men's meal for the community and for myself as well. No. I mean, when you came to rent, Yes. This was the first place? This was the first place, yes. And then now you've built what? Men's meal. So what I did was when I made money from my, uh, my, my garden, I decided to buy. This was the first space to buy. So I decided <laughs> to buy this because I was, I, was, I was frustrated. I was like, no, no one can push me out of a house because of 20 US dollars. So I said, okay, once I make money, that person will be the victim. I'll buy that land <laughs> and put it to the community. So I decided to buy this space and put up a men's meal for the community. And I kicked him completely in this village. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a men's meal that you built? Yes, of course. For the community? Yes, of course. Wow. So yeah. we're filming at six o'clock in the morning. Yes. That's why you don't see anyone in here. But very soon you're going to see people here. Okay, so I decided to buy this for the community one. Secondly, when community comes in here, mm. they do men's crushing. Once they're done crushing their corn, I only get the bran and they will do it for free. So if I get the bran, they'll do it for free and they take the bran, I process it and make livestock feed. So you don't charge anyone? In of here. course, yes. From here? Yes. When, when you were kicked out from here? Yes. Where did you stay now? Okay, I will take you down. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I moved here and put up a temporary shelter right there in the garden. So you were staying in the garden yes. whilst you were fa farming in there? Yes. I, I want to see you. I want to see that. No, no, we'll go down there. Where is the house? This is not a house, bro. Of course, yeah. But... This was where I built my temporary shelter, grass thatched and all that. That's why I decided to put up some, some trees here. And that, that tree here in Marawi, we call it Regase tree. I decided to put up that one because this is now where life was. And uh, believe you me, later on, even in my writings, hmm. I've indicated to say, this should be a protected area. Once I die, I should be buried here because I was almost buried here alive. Sure. And how do you feel anytime you come in here? I, f I feel motivated each and every hour. When you were staying here, how many acres did you own? Zero. Zero acre. And what was going through your mind? I was like, okay, no matter what, but I have to survive. Because I've been rejected, you know. I was trained. And my thinking was, I'll be picked as a nurse. But it didn't work. So I've come here, started renting a house. They have kicked me from that house because I'm failing to pay lentils. I had no option but to be here. My brother, you had zero acres of land. Of course. How many land do you own now? Now I have 175 acres, which 
now translate into 70 hectares of land. How many people have you employed? I've employed 32 permanent workers and I'm also hosting graduates from uh, Agriculture University of, I mean, Arilongwe Agriculture University of Marawa and Natural Resources. Uh, they're here with me, they're doing internship. And I've also some uh, agriculturists from Wimba College of Agriculture, they're here. They're being mentored by a nurse. A nurse who didn't have a job? Of course, yeah. A nurse that was staying, this, this place is like 10 by 10. <laughs> 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 see, yeah. This I, is life. I, I, I am so proud of you, man. Thank you very much. <sighs> I, I see you, you have cattle farms too in here? Of course. I have some cattle, some goats, some sheep, some, some pigs, some chickens, some guinea fowls, some guinea pigs, some rabbits, some takers, some chickens, some. a lot. It's a lot. So. That comes to my next question. What kind of farming are you doing in here? So what you're doing is integrated organic farming. What does that mean? So it's a self-sustaining type of farming. So what you're doing is we do crops, we do livestock, no chemicals, no chemical fertilizer, no pesticides, no vaccines. We get herbs from the farm. We give it to livestock as as, 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 as vaccine, and later from the livestock, we get manure, we bring them down here. We get some, some, some maybe agricultural waste like banana stems, we process them and we feed our pigs and we get manure back here. So I don't buy anything for, for the farm or even for myself. If, if I'm to buy anything, it's airtime for my phone. In secondary, it's salt. The rest I make my own. I make my own toothpaste. I make my own toilet paper. I make my own food. Yeah, sure. You know what? I, I really want you to take me around. Thank you. And we'll continue from there. Thank you very much. Where was your first farm? So this place was my first farm. So the first crop I did was tomatoes. I planted 15,000 seedlings of tomatoes in 2020. How much did it cost you to plant that? I, it costed me around 50,000 kwas, around 50 US dollars. Mm. Okay. Mm. Then the actual work I was doing it myself. Prowling, planting, all that. I was irrigating I had no pump I was using some watering cans mm. you know and the cans I had to I had to borrow from the community as well I hired the watering cans from the community a hole I had to hide from the community as well <laughs> what did you have that time I had nothing just ideas and now the community are working for you of course yeah the community is working for me and I've also tried my level base to transform the community. From 2021 to date, I've managed to give out 200 piglets to the communities. So that once they're raising the piglets, they should be able to pay school fees for their kids. Sure. I mean, this is crazy. And you know what? When I was coming here, people were like, you know, people here, there are, there are a lot of thieves here, you know. Most of the youths around here, they will, they will just come in and get away your stuff. So I was like, no, I'm going to transform this community. All the youths, which are said to be thieves, they are here with me, they are working with me. And you can see from here to my house, it's just a little bit far. Yeah. But I have a lot of stuff here, some sugar canes and bananas and everything here. No one comes in and get it for free and disappear. So why? Because I've engaged the community as well. Because they didn't have a job. You see, so and if, have... if you've created something for them, food for them, yeah. why would they still steal? Let's go back. Yes. With the 15,000 tomatoes that you, is it 15,000 tomatoes? Yeah, 15,000. That you planted? Yes. What was the first profit that you made out so of So from 15,000, mm -hmm. I managed to get 7 million 
400,000 kwacha. Roughly, that was maybe close to, should be maybe 70, uh, seven, uh, seven, uh, 7,000 US dollars for us. You used only $50? Yes, of course. And you made $7,000? Of course, yes. From farming? Yes. No, I don't believe you. No, this is real. You know, ask people around me. You know, when I was coming here, I was literally block. And I've managed to build all this through 50 US dollars. That's what I've used. No run, no grant, no rich uncles, no art. So I've been building this from scratch. And all you did was to sell your phone? Of course, yes. Can we just have a message to the youth of Africa that have phones that cost $1,000, $500, $700, and still writing CVs to go look for jobs? It's about mindset. What has been the major challenge bringing all this farm together? The biggest challenge has been a capital, you know. That's why, you know, I was kicked out from that house and what and what and what. It was the issue of capital. Had it been I had money when I was starting this, I believe the farm could be very huge by now. But I believe in building something in pieces. Yeah, and I'm very patient for that. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Because it has taken me patience to, to be where I am today. The, the reason why I did not wear a shoe this morning because I really want to do this. I really want my feet to fill the soil. Why? The money is in the debt. Exactly. And Africans are trying to avoid the debt. But I'm just telling them we have to go back to the debt. And I'm leading by example by not coming to this farm with a sheet. My feet are in the debt. You know, I, I always tell my, my fellow friends, and my guys were working with me here to say, okay, there's clean money in debt. <laughs> what, 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 what is the reason of having dirty money, but with, um, I mean, clean money, but with dirty minds? But, but, but if your mind is clean, your hands are dirty, you're fine. That's why we are dirty here, but our minds are very clean. We are eating organic foods. Exactly. Okay? We are eating clean money, no stress, no art. Let's go dead. How do you irrigate the farm? So currently we are still using the old way of doing the, uh, uh, doing the irrigation. Okay. We are still using the watering can and um, we are also using one solar pump. Yeah, sure, but since uh, the pump is a little bit bigger, so hmm. we have no option but to use the pump and the watering can. So as one is irrigating the irrigating using the, 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 the solar pump, yeah. the rest of us, we all use the can. How do you feel any time you come into the farm? I feel energized. You know, um, I feel like, you know, uh, we, 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 we are now living the life, you know. Wow. This was just a dream, wow. you know, to own a farm, to eat what you produce. Now we are eating what we are producing, and uh, we are also uh, proud to have land called ours. As a farmer, yes. do you believe that you can become a millionaire out of farming? Absolutely, yes. It's possible. Very possible. You know, look, from 2020 with zero acreage, and now we are sitting on 175 acres of land. That's money. To me, I define that as money. Money is not the what reflects in your account. Money is the assets you have. You see, so land is the biggest asset. So we have land, what else?
It seems like you're growing everything in this farm. Of course, yes. This is the tomatoes, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have tomatoes mm -hmm. and we have beans. So what is happening now is um, tomatoes, mm -hmm. they're heavy feeders. Mm -hmm. They need more nitrogen. So beans, they'll fix nitrogen for tomatoes. Wow. Sure. So if I'm irrigating beans, I'm also irrigating tomatoes. If I'm applying, if I'm, 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 I'm applying manure for tomatoes, I'm also applying manure for the beans. Sure. So this is what we call it symbiotic or companion cropping. The guy who rented a house got kicked out, went to stay on his farm with a small size that you, it's not even 10 by 10. Now, I believe that this is 100 by... No, this is two, 200 by 250. So the fence is 200 by 250 meters. And you live within? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is your house? Of course, yeah, that's my house, my farm house. And, yes. and one thing that I, I really love about this whole place is like, you depend on the sun yeah. for electricity. Yes. You depend on what? Where ground, do you get your ground, water? Groundwater, okay. And my livestock for manure. Then very soon we are going to graduate from, from, from manure to biogas. Wow. But sure. you're talking about getting, uh, what do you call it? Decompose from... So that's it. So all the manure, we always bring them there. That's our compost bin. Okay. Later on, what we get there is 100% organic fertilizer, known as biochar fertilizer. Wow. See here? Yeah, so let's just enter here. See here? So this is 240 tons hmm. of compost. And 240 tons, I can fertilize 100 hectares. And from 100 hectares, if I'm doing corn, I can get 20,000 bags. Sure. So the goal this year is to produce 20,000 bags, uh, 20,000 bags of organic, um, 20,000 bags of organic corn through this. I, I, I'm so scared of this guy that I even want to ask. Is that, is it haze on the floor? The, start, the grass on the floor. Okay, good. So that's rice straws. I use them to keep my, my farm free from dust. And when you're stepping on those straws, you're breaking them. And later on, I mix with my compost. I get compost manure very easy as that. And how do you feed the livestock? The livestock, I give them agricultural waste from the farm. So what do you buy? Nothing. I need to make sure I find something that he bought in this house. Maybe at <laughs> a time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs>they just few. Some of them are gone already. Oh, okay. Oh, they went out. Yeah, yeah. For grazing. Oh, okay. Sure. Hi, hi. Say hi to my... Hello. <laughs> hey, brother. How are you doing? <laughs> hey! See. So you, you saw them too? Of course. So what I'm doing now is... One, I'm selling the pig grits. And two, I'm giving out some pig grits to communities around here. I'm giving them for free. Once they raise them, then later they give me back 30% of the pig grits. For example, if you have 10, if, if your pig has delivered 10 pig, pig grits, I only get three. Mm. You remain with seven, plus the mother. So what I'll do with the three, I'll take the three. One, I'll take it for my farm. And the two, I'll continue giving it out to but the uh, communities around. And now I can see people are able to pay school fees for their, for their children, etc., etc. And people are also enjoying Capando. Yeah. yeah ha Capado. 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 Ah, <laughs> if you go to the street, Capado all over the place, man. Ah. Sure. Nice. Sure, yeah.
So how many picks do you have here at the so, moment? I have 10 pens and uh, 100, 111, 111 pigs, yeah. You got pigeons everywhere? Yeah, yeah, of course. Wow. You sure? What don't you have? Um, donkeys. <laughs> ah, you need to buy a donkey. Yeah, of course. To I help do. in terms of plowing. Uh, I will get one, yeah. But now I think we need to move from manual to at least yeah. um, sophisticated way of doing yeah. farming. Yeah. So instead of buying donkeys here for 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 for, for prowling, plowing, we should just get a tractor. That's 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 yeah, that's sure. good. I just love the settings, man. I feel like I want to come and spend a night in here. You know, <laughs> I think you should build maybe like a resort. That's the goal. In here. An, where, ethic, uh, an ethnic lodge. Exactly. Yeah. More like a lodge. Yes. Yeah. You, you come, you spend a night, you wake up in the morning, spend time with the animals, spend time in the farm, put your feet on the ground. Just to, I mean, connect. Because I would love to stay here, man. Perfect. Are you doing anything to impact your, what you've learned to the rest of us? Ex exactly. We, we, I'm, I've been training farmers since mm. day one. Mm. I've managed to train over 2,000 farmers, wow. you see, and free of charge as well. You don't think you need to build a school? That's the goal. So if we go up there, I have a hostel already. Hostel? Yes, I'm setting up what we call Nhawi Farms Innovation Hub. So that will be Innovation Centre. If you don't mind, we can go that side and take some shots. Definitely. I'm, I, I, of course, I will sure. say no to that. Sure. So the goal is to have at least a very different agricultural school. What is the name of the university that deals with agriculture in here? Uh, Ruana is Rilongwe, the University of Natural Resources and Agriculture. Turn your back. So we need to have Intewi Agriculture University right here. Exactly. And it's about time the Ministry of Agriculture endorsed this for us to make it happen. You don't think so? That's the way to If go. you are from Malawi, leave a comment, let me know. I, I think with the uh, practical aspect of even the agriculture school should be held in here. So you build the school, this one, they come in here to learn practical stuff, spend two weeks, I mean, internship for three months, they can do it here without doing anything else. So by the time they get out, they can start their own farms wherever they find themselves. That's the goal. You are an inspiration. Thank you very and much. And I want to tell each and everyone watching this video, please don't, sh don't watch this video without sharing. Please just share to a friend and family share to friends and family like this video so that it will reach to so many people because personally i'm a big fan and i want you guys to help me get this video out there because this brother right here needs to be celebrated this is why we are on a journey like this to tell you the african story so that you will get out of your comfort zone and go out and create jobs for other africans my brother i want you to see i want to see your school that you want to build, thank, man. thank you very much Just let's go, go down yeah. <laughs> So this is going to be Howe Farms Innovation Hub. Okay. We are going to have a university here. And on top of that, we are going to demonstrate different innovations which are related to uh, smart agriculture. So now, this is just a temporary shelter. It's, 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 it's going to be a hostel very soon. And on top of that, this side, what you're doing is... Um, we are making our own fertilizer from, from the compost toilet. And on top of that, here, we are also harvesting water from the bathroom. So water from the bathroom with soapy stuff comes here. Hmm. And you can see the black stuff there. Yeah. So that's what we call it biochar. So biochar is biomass which have been converted into charcoal under low temperature with zero oxygen zero pollution. So this biochar fills, it, it cleans up soapy water and that soapy water goes down, it percolates and it get this garden. And on top of that, here, what you are doing here is we are making our own fertilizer here. This is modern toilet. Wow. Smell free. Okay. Mm. Please get in. There's no smell in here. <laughs> yes. So, this is the biochar thing, okay? So, if you want to use the toilet, you open it like that, you use it, you get a cup of biochar, like that, 
you put in, you are done. That's yeah. it. You have flushed your toilet. Off you go. Once the toilet is full, you open it here. You get a container here. This container is 35 kgs. You get it, you put it in a pit. So what is happening now is we are getting three containers every week. That is 105 kgs. And 105 kgs, that's roughly two bags of chemical fertilizer. And a bag of chemical fertilizer here in Marawi is 75 US dollars. It means every week I'm making my own 150 US dollars just by using this toilet. It means annually I'm making 150 US dollars by two, uh, two five, I mean, it should be uh, by 52 weeks. That is 150 US dollars times 52 weeks. That will give you around 7,500 US dollars by just using this toilet. This guy needs to be steadied. <laughs> this guy needs to be steadied, man. And you can see here, no sweeping, no what? Yeah, it's just No data at all. And later on, I harvest this, I use it as my compost fertilizer. So that's why I'm saying this will be center of excellence, innovation hub. All the innovations will be showcased right here. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? I see myself as one of the innovative farmers, a farmer who inspired other farmers. What you've done demonstrate that it's possible to make it in Africa. Why is it that so many youth feels like it's not possible to make it in Africa? I think it's, it's the issue of mindset. Look at my girls. They're just free eating around the farm. They go back later. I have hundreds of them now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What comes into your mind when you hear the name Africa? Africa, a land of opportunities. So That's it. It means the opportunities on the continent. A lot of opportunity. It's just that we don't see them or something? We don't see them. Why? Because of the education system. Do you think there's something wrong with our education system? Of course, yes. What is wrong with our education we system? Are we are trying to solve yesterday's problems. That's why we can see today's problems. That is deep. What do you mean by that? Look, today, there's a rooming hunger here in Marawi. And if you ask our leaders, they'll say, no, this hunger is coming in because we can, we can manage to access fertilizer from Ukraine because there's war there. But look here, we have surplus food here using resources which are found within us. Look at my toilet. So, here at Ntawi Farms, we are solving today and tomorrow's problems. But our system is trying to solve yesterday's problems. There's a song in Ghana. It says, yesterday is gone. Another day has come. Do something new in our lives. Exactly. Wow. Sure. See, I've been saying, wow, wow, wow. I've turned an ambulance <laughs> just because of him, because his, his story will make you wow. You are an amazing man. And um, if you have a message for our fellow brothers and sisters living in Africa, what would that message be? It's a simple message. Look around. The opportunities next to you. Grab one. And I would say, grab one and make the best out of it. We have so many Africans that left Africa, went to the West. Did you go to the West before? No. You made your money from the West? No. You made your money here? Yes. What do you mean? I mean, they told us that we cannot make it in here unless we go to the West and come back. Look around. There are so many opportunities. I had to grab one and that's farming. So, you know, I believe that there are so many Malawians out there. If you had a message for Malawians, out of Malawi, what would that message be? If possible, my fellow Malawians, come back here. Let's build a new Malawi. 
If there are opportunities here and good opportunities than what you are trying to explore outside there. We have water, we have land, which is also fertile. Let's utilize it. Let's produce more, feed our people, and export. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? The education system. Wow. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, my dear brother. You had to travel all the way from Ghana. Yep. 7,000 plus kilometers. Yeah. Just to meet me here in Marawi. I don't take it for granted. You are amazing. That's why I came in here. Thank you all so much for watching. I mean, I am inspired. And I know that you are inspired listening to this man right here. And I believe that I'm going to put his number here. Emails. Reach out to him. You can even approach him from Malawi and take him to your country to train people. I think this is why we have this YouTube channel. So like this video, share, subscribe and be part of this awesome family and I will see you all in the next one.